Salutations and welcome back everyone to Tiano the Last of Europe or Brave New World with Code Doctor Update, which might be now the last episode in this campaign, but I do want to apologize for how like, negative I was getting in that last video, but like, my god, that war was a war. Victory Day. Shukshin gazed upon never-ending lines of soldiers from the balcony above the parade, a conclave of emotions tongued at his heartstrings. Pride. Pride in himself. Pride for the country he led out of darkness. Pride for the countless lost souls who had seen the revenge in those who sacrificed to make the Federation's victory possible. This parade was ten times larger and thirty times grander than what had come before. With every step, they boasted of the world. This is the all-Russian army, the force that broke the invincible Wehrmacht, the soldiers who liberated millions and crushed a superpower in their palm. It was only one of the miracles his presidency had brought to the Russian waste. Dread, only an hour ago, hours ago, Ahmed Khan had briefed him on the armed forces' apparent inability to contain the rise in pro-national uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, daddyism t terrorismus. The Orwells, insurgents, and radicals. A radicalized colonists left behind by the Hare's retreat, arming themselves, bombing gatherings, murdering civilians, and anyone that put the guard down, and allegedly even planning an attempt on his life. Dennis' life. Oh, hope for the future. Finally, Moscow and the lands beyond were a bombed out ruin, shattered by decades of enslavement, but they could be rebuilt. The werewolves could be rooted out. The cities were born, dead cultures brought back to life. It would be no easy task, but with a bit of blood, sweat, and tears, Eastern Europe would take, retake their place in the sun. He looked to his left. I met Khan, and Pokrushkin stood, smiling, waving at the parade. Pokrushkin leaned over and shouted in the President Shukshin's ear, Whatever happens now, you save millions. Well done! The poverty's still getting better. Ah, uh, yes. The CSTO. Not bad. Oh, and we can probably pull our agents out now. Forgot about that. Uh, oh, they're both captured! Yay! Okay, they're both gonna die. Well, oh well. Oh crap, that's not good. Um, oh, the Sofiers can still have capital. Why don't we can reintegrate these guys, too? Congo emigration. It is what it is. As we're declaring a martial law, this is not a drill, my friends. It is not a drill. Um, there is one I might have. Although the president does not wish to grant the military more power in the reconstruction zones, if the parts and threats be dealt with swiftly and effectively, it would appear that the president has no choice but to do so. With the military governors having more power to deal with the partisans, effectively manage around their domestic issues to plague the West, peace and stability can slowly begin to return to the lands of Eastern Europe. That is not a drill, though. Oh, we still have the same. Why? Oh. On combating the Vatibulfs. But as Shukshin sat before the radio receiver, sweat dripping from his brow, I can't believe I'm going to do this, he said. After all we fought for, the sacrifices we've made, has it really come to this? I met Khan Sultan. Uh, <clears throat> gently puts his hand on his friend's shoulder. Vasily Makarovich, I understand your trepidation. We all feel fear before any point or moment. The anticipation is always way worse than the reality. Take a moment and let your nerves settle. Shukshin nodded, and let his hands rest on the cool pine wood table behind him. A clock ticked away the seconds before the plunge. Tick tock, tick tock, a minute passed, and then two. Finally, Shukshin picked up the receiver. Citizens of the Russian Federation, he began, this is your president speaking. I'm forced to address you directly by the severity of the current emergency. The situation in the Moscow region is at a breaking point. The Third Reich has armed rebels and terrorist groups throughout the liberated territory. They are attacking civilians, robbing, raping, looting, destroying all that we fought to protect. Shukshin took a breath, wiping the sweat from his brow. The severity of this emergency cannot be overstated. I have no desire to panic or frighten you, but I must be frank. These werewolves are an existential danger to the peace and prosperity of the Moscow region. He took a breath and seated himself to change the history of the Russian Federation forever. As of today, he said, and with the consent of the Federal Co Federation Council, I hereby declare martial law within the Moscow region. The state of affairs will continue until such a time as these terrorists have been rooted out and law and order have been restored. I assure you, he said, this is a temporary measure to defeat anti-Russian elements remaining in our territory. The state will not be extended beyond the Moscow region, nor will be maintained in perpetuity. We simply ask for your trust and your cooperation until such time as the emergency has come to an end. We have to give you freedom. Let us work for it together. Thank you. President Shukshin returned to the receiver to his mouth while shaking hands. Speech, perhaps the most important broadcast of his life, was over. Well done, Vasila, I've met Khan said. Now we just need to survive the fallout. No, Shukshin said. We need to pray that no tyrant ever uses his president to destroy the Federation's democracy. Citizen, this is only a temporary solution. Please do not shout. For the moment we have trampled over the Reich, Nazi partisans, otherwise known as the Verbovs, have begun an insurgency against the Russian Federation, locking attacks of terror against our, arms, our citizens and harassing the All-Russian Army. Before we can begin to rebuild Eastern Europe, we must first end, find out where these terrorists hide and destroy them before they cause, before they cause more harm upon the already hurt peoples of uh, Eastern Europe. The Slutsba Bezonosposti are the most efficient at tracking down the leadership of the underground terrorist gr uh, groups and destroying them from them. That was much was proven the Federation was faced with a narrow neck threat in the early 60s. We can send our best to infiltrate the ranks and annihilate their leadership from within, breaking their organization in the world to resist the Federation. Cool. Oh, wow. Expand intelligent presence. <clears throat> the Sosba Bezobodnosti has been for years the right hand of the Federation. Their past experience in rooting out terrorist elements such as the narrow necks will prove invaluable in rooting out Nazi partisan forces that continue to battle our forces throughout the former Rex Commissariat and prevent the Federation from rebuilding these lands in any meaningful capacity. 
Send humanitarian aid as uh, across the newly liberated West. Millions of people are ruthless and starving. Decades of German mismanagement and the atrocities of the Wehrmacht committed against the innocent peoples of Eastern Europe throughout the war have devastated the population. The Federation must be swift in aiding our Western brothers and sisters. Through this difficult time in our history and a system of healing, the deep scars left behind the Wehrmacht uh, occupation. 76. I never thought I'd make it to 1976 in any TNO uh, game, but you know, I guess we're there. Sorry to my spies. Well, they're dead now, basically. Actually, what's it kind of looking like? That's it's not bad. It's probably a bad idea to do this. Can we do this though? Surplus, not bad. Um, but debt still goes higher. Blah, blah, blah. Deploy special forces. The Spetsnaz unit is an elite unit to deal with dangerous domestic situations that threaten the Russian people, such as terrorism, bomb threats, and hostage situations. With the Western chaos, it's time to send the best of the best westward and assist the all-Russian army in taking down the Nazi threat once and for all. And let's see here, State Duma's okay. You guys are doing all right. Uh, Project Malignia, doing okay. 0.18, not as good as I hope, but whatever. No, we have 85.256. 85.256. 85. And 85.256. That actually went down a little bit as growth is going up. Hey, not bad. So we're going to be focusing on the growth just a wee bit. Just pull the special forces and we'll get the event The Raid. Send in the Air Force. Since the founding of the Federation in the early 50s, <clears throat> we've always prided ourselves in our air capabilities. Through the strength of our Air Force, we've been able to triumph over our enemies from Moscow to Magadan. Now that the Luftwaffe has been beaten and repelled from the skies of Russia, we can now turn our air capabilities against the Partisans. With the Air Force against the Partisans, we can find out where these cockroaches hide and bomb them into the ash. Absolutely. Because we love bombing people. Not bad. The raid. Captain Morozov's speciality has always been counterinsurgency. He had a natural ability for smoking out terrorists, partisans, bandits, and everything in between. He earned his stripes years ago during the Narl Neck insurgency, back when the Federation was a little more than a city state. When his units were appointed to deal with the Veva problem in Moscow, he knew the drill. Many of his superiors objected to this method of trying to find the ringleader instead of breaking up the smaller cells, but Morozov believed that cutting the head off the snake was more efficient than cutting off its tail. And his methods eventually bore fruit after a while of listening on wiretaps. Collecting info from informants and some intense interrogation sessions, the Spetsnaz finally looked at the leader of the Moscow chapter. They tracked the leader to an unassuming house in the outskirts of the city which belonged to Sir Boris Ignatyev, also known as Gardner to his web of allies, in the middle of the night. Morozov and his men stormed the lonely house determined to take Gardner dead or alive. Unfortunately for them, the house was deep, seemingly deserted, until one of the Spetsnaz discovered a hidden door behind a bookcase. It was hastily opened, and the door opened to the, uh, a staircase that led to a secret basement. The unit went down to the basement to discover makeshift operations room filled with maps, documents, and weapons. The Spetsnaz discovered a man attempting to use a radio to send messages in German, possibly to warn his werewolf allies of being discovered. A voice in Russian yelled at him to stop and turn around slowly with his hands up. Instead of complying, the man tried to pull a gun on the Spetsnaz, and within seconds, Garmer was dead. And that Spetsnaz and Russian intelligence agents combed through the documents found and discovered that they stumbled upon treasure. The man they killed wasn't named Garmer or Boris, but nicknamed Lutz Hoffman, an agent of the German Abwehr tasked with organizing the Moscow chapter of the Variables. With the intelligence gathered at Hoffman's headquarters, the Russians found out every cell, a safe house, supply route, and every plan attack. The next few weeks saw a crackdown of epic proportions. Hundreds of German werewolves dead and thousands more taken prisoner. Felix like Dominoes in the Moscow provinces was finally freed from the terror. The end of the Moscow chapter, the final strike. Across the West, our forces have located the bases and leadership of the Nazi partisans that continue to harass our foes. Um, <clears throat> our forces. Harass our forces. While well, the Western situation is stabilizing our military in place, the time has finally come to launch a final strike against these partisans and that threat they pose against the innocent once, once and for all. What the heck happened here? Wait, why did Bundes... Ah. Wait, do we... What happened to my state here? Billy Brandt, why did you annex my Baltic states? Bruh, why did you annex Poland? Wait, what? Yeah, send in the Air Force. Uh, we were supposed to get the Baltic states. Bruh, bruh, we just got gypped. What the heck? Well, I don't know the time is recording, but is that a bug? That's gotta be a bug, right? Baltic reconstruction. Give me back my Baltic states. We're building Moscow. 
For decades, our sacred Moscow suffered under German rule. Many of its greatest monuments were left to rot while once vibrant Russian communities were reduced to their ghettos. That's no longer the case now, though. Russia's back and stronger than ever, with hope in her hearts and triumph in the war, lifting us even higher. It's time to rebuild the Third Rome and create the most glorious city the world ever has the privilege of seeing. Death from above. Anna flew through the skies and joined the soft tone of the MiG-27 as it soared through the clouds. Anna loved, so loved being up here. It was peaceful. There wasn't anywhere in the skies that bothered her, unlike the chaos on the ground or the roughness of the water, but she wasn't in the skies just for fun of it today. The war with Germany may have ended, but it seemed like the Germans who found themselves in the Russian Federation continued to resist. Why do they keep fighting? Can't they see they've lost? And asked herself as she made her descent. Flying low, she approached her target. The Tanti terrorist group call themselves werewolves that have taken over a farm, killing the owners, and turned the place into a fortress. Her job was to bomb the place, lighten the defenses up so Ivanov and the boys could clean up the mess. In a few minutes, the farm was totally in sight. She flicked a switch, composing herself as she activated the comms. Colonel Ivanov, this is Captain Anna. I'm approaching now. I'll tell the boys to get their toys ready. Copy that, Captain. Ready to move when ready, Dmitry Ivanov replied. Anna dove down sharply towards the farm, unloading the payload of explosives. She looked over her shoulder as she watched the flames ascend to the skies. The farmhouse and the bomb were torn to pieces. She sighed as she took to the skies once more. Why are the Germans forcing them to do this? She activated her comms once more, contacting the strike team on the ground. Target at Colonel Ivanov. Happy hunting! The Third Rome. This place is a dumb facility. Why can't we just bulldoze everything and start over? Shukshin stopped in his tracks and turned to his old friend, Admet Khan Sultans, hero of the Soviet Union, and a skilled pilot stood slightly shaken at his ally's quick movement. Shukshin briefly looked down at the rubble before his feet. We can't just tear down centuries of history, and that Moscow was the whole reason we fought and won this war. That's how we rallied our men, that's how we could insult the widows and the crying mothers of those fallen. That was our will to fight, take back Moscow, we can't forsaken our duty to all people who died along the journey just because it doesn't look pleasing right now. Rebuilding takes time, Shukin stoically responded. The pair continued to walk, seeing beggars in the streets and beleaguered citizens shambles along carrying groceries. Sultan spoke up once again, why can't we build something new? Something exciting, haven't you seen those American cities? They have all tall offices, buildings everywhere, and can support a modern economy. There's more than enough cities where plans like those can be implemented, but the idea of Moscow, and more importantly, the people of Moscow, deserve better than what those cities can provide. Think about how many people would be forced from their homes if we let them, some developers come in and buy up all the land and make office space. You know, Moscow's prestige needs to be kept, and as people put first, President Shukshin responded. I suppose you're right, I'm glad I'm taking you to the current Taking the current residents of Moscow into consideration, Vasily, Russia should be a place where people of all backgrounds could live in harmony, Sultan enthusiastically said. They fell around the corner into the Red Square. In the distance, the scaffolding covered the domes of St. Basil's Cathedral. The structure would be restored to how it was in the days before the occupation. It would serve as the center of Moscow's skyline and would signify to the world that Russia was finally back, putting the pieces back together again, expand the monument, reconstruction efforts. The monuments of Moscow is what made a glorious capital truly shine. So many beautiful sites that once upon a time were a testament to our strength, ingenuity, and intelligence as a nation. Now they lie in ruin and let their rods were made into a practice targets by the Wehrmacht. Achievement by the Wehrmacht was horrifying. Centuries of Russian achievements destroyed. Their Kremlin, in the heart of Moscow turned into a mere military base for the Wehrmacht. So that, that, it's unacceptable. We need to restore our lost history as quickly as possible, no matter the cost. The value to our people, the lessons they leave, no matter how dark they may be, are invaluable in ensuring that the mistakes of the past are never repeated and modernized the construction equipment. The construction equipment of the West Russian Reconstruction Zone in comparison to the Russian Federation's equipment is rather outdated with many construction projects taking many more weeks to complete than the modern tools that workers of the Russian Federation currently enjoy. If we wish to rebuild the administrative heart of Moscovy as quickly as possible, it would be pertinent to support the reconstruction efforts and send some of the Federation's construction equipment to the West Russian Reconstruction Zone. Mini and Posarsky. Also, we will continue with bo or a bombing run and assassinate Verbov leadership. The Sosba Bezoboznosti are most efficient at tracking down the leadership of underground terrorist grounds and destroying them from within. That much was proven when the Federation were faced with the task the Narodnuk threat in the th early 60s. Center best infiltrated the ranks and annihilated their leadership from within, breaking the re organization of the res World Resist Federation. Uh, stood silently with Alexander Novikov. At his side in the Red Square where months ago the Victory Day Parade had been held in celebration of Russia's greatest victory over Germany, Shukshin. Looked up at the monument of Min Minin and Bozarsky, now fully restored by the Federation's finest sculptors. The monument was created in the early 19th century during the age of the Tsars, during the Battle of Moscow in 41. Minin's face had been blown apart by a stray artillery shell on for St. Basil's Cathedral. Following the Great Patriotic War, the monument was made of a firing range by the Wehrmacht to train the recruits to fire weapons. Vasily remembered just how horrified he'd been at seeing the bullet holes that paint in the front of the monument. Vasily smelled the statues of some of the Russia's finest with scars of occupation now gone forever. Vasily looked beyond the statue to the cathedral itself, which was covered in scaffolding as Russian construction workers continued working tirelessly to restore the iconic building to its former glory. Temle Alexander Shukshin spoke, getting the general's attention. Do you ever think things will ever be like they were before, before the war and the chaos? Will the Germans and Russians ever greet each other as brothers? Shukshin asked as he places a hand on the smooth stone of the monument. Novikov was silent for a moment as he thought deeply about the president's question. They had finally been the Germans, and now the motherland was on a long road to recovery, but could Russia truly move on from what the Germans had done to her? Could the scars of war truly heal? Alexander took a deep breath, looking towards his ever-patient president. One day, perhaps. One day, the heart of Russia. 
Our second Moscow, the heart of Russia, has been reconstructed back to its former glory. With a symbol of strength that Russia now restore, we can turn our attention beyond the borders of the great city to the wider West Russian reconstruction zone and address the many problems plaguing the sacred region. Also, there's a giant bug in the game, like we saw earlier. Um, the Baltic states were annexed by the German Reich. But then when I did that, like, so instead of the German Reich annexing, because I, I even played as the German Reich for like three days, and the game just auto, like, annexes the, um, the Baltic reconstruction zone for some reason automatically without any input from the, the player. So that's a huge bug. So when I did that, I saw that, like, there's nothing I can do. So I'm like, okay, you know what? We deserve the Baltic states more than the Germans. So I decided to use Khan's commands to annex the Baltic states. Well, when I, when the, it, was a, it was March 5th, uh, at hour 3 of 1976, that would happen. But when I annexed, uh, you know, the Baltic states, the same thing happened with Belarus. Uh, like, I would have the Russian Federation would own this part of the Baltic states, and then... The Germans would own Belarus for some reason. I don't understand why. Like, so that's why I annexed Belarus as well, because the Germans would annex both of these places, basically. Which is a huge bug in the game, if you ask me, which sucks, because that limits what we can read in the focus tree, but I'll probably go back and actually use Kant's commands to read through the focus trees of those two nations, and then hopefully continue to push onwards, because that's very disappointing that something like that would break. Or be ruined. So we're trying to core with basically now the Baltic states and Belarus. Rebel Western cities... Oh, that's not bad. Support rural Muscovites. I see GDP growth. The Aussie All Russian Army marches westward. Many Muscovites and its cities were turned into battlefields or fought over between our brave sons and the Wehrmacht. As a result, the numerous amount of these cities were damaged and many Muscovites losing their homes in the fighting. Our mission is more than simply liberating all Russians from tyranny, but bringing them to a Russia where we can all live good lives. It's of the utmost importance that we support the Muscovites in the reconstruction efforts to ensure that these once ruined cities can be restored to their former glory and that all Russians have a place to call home. The heart beats once again. Also, so we are coring them, honestly. I'll go back in the save, and we can read all those focuses, and then I'll go back to here, because I honestly want to annex everything here. I like annexing everything. That just makes me happy. So, um, yeah. But, currently we're doing okay. It's really surplus. We did do temp tax, which does hurt us a little bit, but we'll try to lower the debt, the debt just in period. And I don't know how we have $4 billion in cost with no divisions, but... Marshal Novikov looked around at the rebuilt Red Square. After weeks of construction, the walls of the mighty Kremlin and everything within had been restored, as well as the rest of the city. When Alexander first arrived in Moscow, it was a wasteland of ruined buildings and peasants all coated in dust and ash. The Kremlin itself was barely standing. For a while, Novikov believed the city could never be rebuilt. As he looked around this thriving Kremlin, native Muscovites posing, posing for pictures of the gate, he couldn't be happier to be wrong. Of course, Moscow was only the first step in the Federation's reconstruction efforts. Most of Western Russia are great cities, including Smolensk, Tver, Tula, Lazan. Valdnez and many, many others were still struggling to recover from decades of damage. There were some under his command who believed trying to restore what remained of Western Russia was a futile effort. They thought it would be easier to knock down these Russian achievements and rebuild from scratch, once, perhaps once. Novikov would agree, but after seeing what they've accomplished in Moscow, he didn't help but scoff at the idea. If the great city of Moscow could reclaim its former glory, then the entirety of Western Russia could easily do the same. Western Russia shall find its golden age once more, he thought. Soon enough, the memories of the glory's past would be restored to today. Decades of horror would be erased in a breath, and a golden dawn would rise over the waste. Nevikov chuckled as he looked up at the spires of St. Basil's Cathedral. No need to become so idealistic. Perhaps Shukshin was rubbing off of him. Or perhaps he'd finally grown too old for cynicism. Encourage foreign investments. The reconstruction of Muscovite cities is slowly helping the region recover, but without any foreign investment, Muscovy will not be able to become as economically competitive or innovative as Central Siberia or the Volga. We should encourage investors from America and Japan instead of businesses in the healing lands of Muscovy to help the troubled regions recover and to achieve the same level of prosperity as the rest of the Federation. Zarya. Shukshin opened the door on the opened the, not the door, the folder on the desk, and began his head began to spin. There were countless charts, figures, and numbers, literally hundreds of sheets of paper arguing for his attention. One described the oil output of central West Siberia, another pointed to a deficit of precious metals and argued to direct resources from the military to an unspecified project. Another posited the probability of the long term cooperation between the Federation and the oil fan, but the item that caught his attention most was a cover page, a simple drawing of a phoenix capturing the word Operation Zoria. Gentlemen, I can't make heads or tails of this, the President Shukshin said. He pushed the folder towards the visitors. Give me the executive summary. You have five minutes. This is why I like him so much. And until a Yohontal, chief a financial officer of the Titan Group, said to his shriveled companion, dude knows what he wants. He turned back to the President Shukshin, his incisors gleaming in the salesman's eye. We're proposing a public-private partnership between your government and our newest subsidiary, Titan Aeronautics. We need investment capital. We think you'd like to create jobs in the greater Moscow area, considering how much damage the Nazis caused, he said. I'm listening, Shukshin said. What are you suggesting? Passenger transport planes? Jet fighters? Are you going to target the domestic market or sell abroad? None of the above! Johan Thav said as a small wide and we want to help start the Federation space program. Surprise struck President Shukshin like a bolt of lightning. A 
The space program Mr. Yohonta were so restricting reconstructing Moscow, not to mention our other territorial gains. How could I possibly convince the assembly to fund this project? Simply said, we have figures from both uh, Germany and the U.S. The overall GDP gains of funding a space-oriented R&D program far all strip the costs. He leaned in the desk, his tie dangling over the seal of the Republic. But honestly, we're talking about putting a cosmonaut on the moon within ten years. Who would turn down the opportunity to make such history? And the palace of the sun shall open and emit glory from its gates. Let's support rural Muscovites. For decades, Muscovy has been seen in the world as the backwater of Europe, a poor rural subject of the Reich. Can your progress made in urbanizing and industrializing these lands were quickly undone during advancing of the Reich's commissariat at Muscovy? With Muscovy firmly under our control, though, our first step should be to urbanize these lands as soon as possible, starting with modernizing the agricultural industries of the West, lifting the peasants out of the poverty and bringing it up to par with the rest of the Russian Federation. The presidential election of 1976, Ivan Karatov was once a scarred man. The long hours of back-breaking labor, the beyond brutal conditions, and the icy cold in the Varkuta labor camp did that to everyone, prisoner or guard, who was foolish enough to inhabit it. To this day, he carried the scars and hardened palms of those days. He once thought that life under that the continuous spell of petty fiefdoms would never end, even after the NKVD fell. It has come under another government who cared not for his well-being, but now times are changing. When Karatov had mi mi migrated to the city of Baranov and saw President Shukshin for the first time, his heart had beat with something he had not experimented since, or experienced since his childhood. Jubilation, hope, a genuine dash of idealism, an infectious dream of eternal optimism and true and broader happiness for the future. The sun seemed to shine brighter on his face, now plastered with a dumb, white grin. Now that the wars were over, the reforms were done, and his life was truly transformed, he thought that he'd seen the end of wonder. He was wrong that morning he woke up to a stunning announcement. Elections. President Shukshin had given way to democracy and is scheduling elections. Now, his life was flowed with banners, posters, slogans, political campaigns, campaigns and debates and news on his newly bought TV set. He truly had seen another Russian miracle, the one greater than the miracle in the Volga or on the Don, the one greater than the miracle of the Second West Russian War. On his way back home, he was intercepted by the Nova Novaya Gazeta for a poll with a wide smile and groceries in hand. He says confidently, President Shukshin has my vote. Um, I'm not sure what these will be different like. Um, Katorovich, Korajin, Primakov. We're going to go with Shukshin just because, I mean, it seems like, who else would you, why would you vote for those other people? Like, the president has brought so much wealth and whatnot here. And also, I do I did some of the comments from that last episode of the previous episode as well. Um, but, like, some, well, last episode as well. But, like, you don't want me to annex stuff, which I get. You know, I understand. But at the same time, like, this, it had to be done or it'd be bugged. And Poland's still gone. So Poland's died no matter what. Even when Germans go democratic, Poland just does not exist. So we're still doing rebuild the Western uh, cities. But one or two days. Also, where's the uh, thing? We're still rebuilding. Uh, oh, with the elections... Here we are. Uh, next election uh, in a few months, of course. Oh, polling. Hold a rally. The popularity of the rap will increase by 6%. Looking pretty good in the Far Eastern District. Campaign slander. Discredited opposition. Uh, slander. Decreased momentum of all opposition parties by 1%. Over here, rap is doing pretty darn well. There's 4 million voters. There's 10 million voters here. Independents are pretty large. Um, let's see. Over here, the RSLP is doing okay. We're still in the lead, though. 9 million voters. Down here, we're doing pretty well with us. And over here, though... The DSPR is doing quite well with, of course, there's not as many people over there, so. Really, we want to focus down here a lot, and in the Siberian district. Volga, eh, we'll see. Um, hold a rally, increase the popularity of the rap by 6%. Increase the popularity of the most influential party by 6%. Sl uh, campaign, increase momentum of the rap. Oh, control by the, ja well, it's not controlled by the Japanese Empire, but, you know, I understand. Uh, momentum, how do you see momentum? It should have an arrow next to those, right? Well, maybe it should discredit opposition or campaign. Can we do it for several ones? Or how often can we do this? Is it once every two months? The polls. Um, estimated to receive a lot of the votes. 33%. IRP. Okay, cool. Independent so. And encourage for investment. As we'll read about... A Russian spring. As dawn broke over the eastern horizon, the sky was filled with a soft pink light. Valery is already away, pulling his black coat tight around his body in an attempt to stave off the morning chill. His old beaten shoes drums awkwardly on the footpath, and he could just feel the cold seeping through the leather already. He just smiled, however. How could he not? There was a familiar smell of sweet flowers in the air and the jewel like glow of fresh green leaves. Russia was in bloom once more, and Valery swelled with joy that he had lived to see it. Not so long ago. Any dreams of an end to occupation smeared, uh, seemed far off and fragile. 
And the virtue of love, the Valerie Saber now had been sealed under the lock and key and iron freight trains and deported back into the black heart of the Reich. When the Federation had spread its wings across the Reich's border, Valerie and so many others had cowered in the darkness, afraid to join their eastern brothers for fear of retribution and the fear would wreck, or wreck upon the Russian Federation after beating the armies of Russia once more. The Federation's defeat had never come, however. All across Western Russia, scene, similar scenes of ecstasy erupted like blossoms. From the forests of Tsakov to the white plains of Orwell, a thousand Valerys leapt to their feet to aid in the reconstruction. Valerie felt his old joints creak as he heaved buckets of wet concrete. He felt like his feet dry ever so slightly as he hurried to help, but as he and twelve other Russians pulled on the rope, tearing the swastika down above the Smolensk city hall, he felt the return of emotion long forgotten. Pride. The path would be well, would belong, and he would surely not live to see it complete, but he knew that one day Russia would shine brighter than any star in the night sky, and the Gavar shall bloom once more. Um, oh. Oh, look at that. So we do have a little bit of momentum. Do we campaign harder here? So how long does it take? Oh. Oh, this is telling me it's going to end, too. 86 days? Can you do it once per day? I guess you only do one at one place each time, huh? Military austerity is gone, which I think was a waste of time to do anyways, but whatever. Um, keep this place open. Better wolves. Strike urban outposts. 5%. And this one. Well, 10% seems... Well, the strength is at 5, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Um, okay. Uh, sport world must collect. I read this earlier. So if you want to these again, please go ahead. Let's take a look see real quick. So I'm not sure how much more. Oh, hello. Uh. That's looking a little better now. I'll increase momentum here for now, and then over this one. Um, oh boy. Look into the future. Alexei woke to a commotion of voices outside his tent. He took a long uh, look outside. A large crowd had wrapped around the newly placed board. A familiar voice called him from the mob's belly. Alexei, I've got something to show you. Uh, the young man struggled to keep his eyes open. Sleeping on a few rags strewn over the bare earth was far from an actual bed, but he knew better than, than to complain. Life in the temporary residence encampment was already far better than living under German rule. And when his eyes did open, his friend Oleg held a piece of paper in, uh, in his limp wrist right in front of his face. I got to it first, Oleg said. I know set of developmental programs for future career paths. Alexei read the paper aloud in a sleep-addled voice. Computer pro science, courses in teaching new standardized computer programming, to just from Russian to the center of the worldwide tech industry. With coding, you can make the programs of the future. Sponsored by the new Millennia program in conjunction with Microsoft? Alexei looked up and never heard of them. Me neither, but it's got to be better than slaving away in a concrete factory. Alexei shook his head. Oh, no. You know I never finished school, and this seems complicated. Oleg shook his friend with a vicious slap. You darn fool, don't you see? This is even better than school. So we'll make something of ourselves, just like President Shukshin says. The future's in our hands. And what if you're wrong? No one ever struck it rich by playing safe. Now come on, the career office is already open. So we're still here. Is this going up at all? Like, what does it mean to, like, momentum? Because it doesn't seem like it's doing very much. Um, we're going to we definitely win there. Severe District's going to be kind of, hmm. Oh, they have momentum, too. You know what? We're going to increase the momentum here, too, then. Oh, they're kind of close this year, too. So, <clears throat> got to keep an eye on that. We'll do this one and then create new opportunities? Sure. Well, uh, the modernization of agriculture in Muscovy is a great first step in developing these broken lands. It'll be in, through the powerful fist of industrialization that'll transform the Eastern European backwater into the economic and industrial heart of the Russian Federation. Already, several Russian companies have requested to build new factories in these lands, now ripe with opportunity. Many of the ruined factories that had existed during the days of the old Union can be easily rebuilt within weeks and offer jobs to millions of Muscovites who are left jobless following the war. The people of Muscovy require new opportunities to accelerate its economic development, and the Russian Federation shall deliver. As it should. Uh, nuclear interface. Uh, our fate in this world shall be sealed for the better or for worse. So at the end of the month, in a few days, we shall have this done too. Project Millennia. Happy August, everybody. Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so... So what do we do about this? Um... Well, it's done. So. And the final strike. Cool. Don't need to do that either. And. Economy. A little bit of a deficit. Not good. How do we get the deficit back? Hmm. Interesting. Weird. Oh. Before we let it go on. Um. Yeah, we definitely want to keep going up that way. Um, here, we're going to uh, just hold a rally. 
Yeah, so these guys would definitely be under us. This is definitely under us for now. We'll probably hold a rally in the Ural district. Uh, uh, 0.86. That seems a little bit less. 0.86 million will want to vote for us. And then we have 0.86 and 4.5 million. 8.6, 4.5 million. And the final strike. Hans wept the sweat from his forehead as he looked down at the map of Eastern Europe. Before the Slavic horrors crawled their way back west and destroyed Hitler's legacy, the werewolves had resisted the enemy since the Treaty of Riga, but it seemed that they despite their best efforts to own the Metro victorious in the end. The shooting outside ceased as loud Russian voices could be heard. It seemed that the Hans would be the last of his brothers. His breathing became fast as he reached for his HK-4, aiming at the door. The hand jiggled for a moment before a jet black boot kicked in the door. Hans yelped in fear as a Russian charged in, firing his pistol and dislodging the weapon from Hans' shoulders. Or hands. He fell to the ground, his back against the walls, he looked up at the soldier standing over him. Ah, Hans, it's good to finally meet you. You're a hard man to find. I'm sure you know who I am, yes? The soldier asked as he approached a cowering German. Dmitry Ivanov, yes, I know. You, you've killed many of us. You're the assassin. Russia's monster, Hans replied. I got my orders, Hans. President Shukshin wants you guys out of this here by enemies necessary, and I don't want to disappoint the president. You're the last one, Hans. The werewolves die with you. <coughs> Hans looked up at the man. That kept hundreds of his fellows werewolves up at night, praying that Russia's monster wouldn't pay them a visit. He could feel his hands shaking as he stared into the barrel of the gun. The resistance was over, and everything that the Aryan peoples of Europe had fought to achieve had been undone. The Russians have won. It seems that after everything, you Judeo-Bolshevik puppets have finally won, and you we lost. Just shoot me already. Spare me the shame of my failure, Hans spoke as he closed his eyes. Dmitry pulled the trigger, and Hans collapsed to the ground. The werewolves were finally finished. Eastern Europe could finally heal. A soldier named Bogdan Belyav entered the room, and an AKM in his hands. Sir, what are our orders, soldier asked? Torture place, leave the bodies, remove it, and people's support for the present will dramatically increase. Exactly what we wanted and needed. So, what do we do here? I guess, the Once the next stage completes, after some time, the next stage will be unlocked. Well, actually, let's just do it minimally. There you go. Hopefully, completes. But Dimitrov. The town of Dimitrov was ancient. Located in the outskirts of Moscow, the village's residents had no knowledge or access to modern agricultural methods. They lived in squalor, condemned to subsistence by German supremacy and decades of war. One foggy morning, <clears throat> the elderly farmers and their children were awoken by the rumble of engines. Immense convoys laden with every kind of supplies thundered down the de town's dusty roads. A squadron of men in business suits parked outside the historical center. Their assistants set up the tents and unpacked reams of paperwork. It wasn't long before a young Georgia approached. His nickname was a joke, of course. He was nearly 45, muscular and balding, with callous hands and a dark tan born of years in the fields. He'd always been the curious sort, though his parents had done their best to discourage him. He stepped side, sidestepped to the one of the assistants. A girl no older than 19 included his throat. Oh, miss, what's all this about? She leaped to face him, bubblegum snapping between her teeth. Hey, there, I have to say, I love your town. It's so cute. She extended her hand. Margarita... Kozlova, visiting from the Omsk State Agarin University, go owls. Young Gorky had never heard of such a school. He took her hand and listened, young lady. Margareta. Margareta, it's a pleasure to meet you, miss, but I really want to know about the trucks. Oh, that, Mar she uh, slapped her hand. Duh, well, my professor's working with the Ministry of Agriculture. We're in an experiment. We bought some new tractors. The cheer squad did a whole collection for it. We baked cookies and it was super cool, and we're hypoth hypothesizing that if we teach you guys how to use them, plus implement a better fertilizer, your crop outputs will be well, about double. I know I left the numbers around here somewhere. Dmitrov's native crossed his arms. Miss, I've been farming all my life. My father, my father's father, my father's father's father. All We all farmed here. Coming here with your fancy gadgets, not even asking, trying to tell us how to do our jobs is a bit rude. She cooked, uh, cocked her head to the side. Well, it's a volunteer experiment, and we're going to pay you. Miss, you're terrible, terrible salesman. Where do I sign? Looking so far decent. Uh, more support. There's good. Ooh, so we were... Oh, okay, so it actually is going up a little bit more, which is kind of nice. Um... Because down here we're at four and a half. If we do campaign, <coughs> I should continue to increase it. And over here, if we hold a rally, we can still do really well, even though technically this is way more important because there's more people down there. And we're going to integrate Grodno for now. Uh, we're introduced Russian. For decades, the Muscovites have been forced to learn and speak the language of the former oppressors. The result of this is a clear language barrier that has created a large divide between Muscovy and the Russian Federation. We do not expect to overcome this large language barrier at any time soon, but by reintroducing Russian as the official language of the region, we can slowly begin to heal the cultural and ling linguistic damage done by the Germans. First state work, huh? Cool. A day at the store. On a trudge through the snow to a newly made market. After the last one was bombed during uh, the fighting, her district of uh, Yaroslav was designated a priority reconstruction. So it was no surprise when the new marketplace was announced. <coughs> what did surprise her was that the old dingy marketplace was uh, replaced by more than a few stalls. Instead of stalls, the old marketplace was replaced by an actual building. <coughs> 
It had bright lights assorted in the colors of the Federation, and as soon as she stepped across the threshold inside, she immediately felt a wall of heat. After experimenting the heat, or experiencing it, something even her home struggled to get, she looked down at what was aisles of food items and goods. The shock of the quality was only beaten by the prices she saw. First on the list was caviar, followed by kvass, and then a myriad of other goods. When the total came up, it was significantly cheaper than what her family had been paying before. As she pulled out cash for the total, the lady behind the register, dressed in severe clothing, started a conversation. Miss, I'm obligated to let you know we're looking for more people to hire. Our more qualified staff are often moving from different locations to help start various stores throughout the Liberated Territories. <coughs> Anya wondered, wonder, It'd be nice to have a warmer place during the winters, and the pay would mean the family wouldn't need to depend on her parents' funds. I would love to. Is there anything any time you would want me to come in for an interview or even training? Anna wrote her name and time. She'd be able to come in, and she left the Sabir store as a sales associate. Maybe she can now get her sister something nice. Yeah. These are both going out, which is nice. Um, over here, which is good. We're a bit, a little bit ahead, which is nice as well. And over here, uh, we're, we're working on it. What if you hold a rally? 1.22 million, which isn't, you know, not bad, not bad. These two are going to be probably fine, like I said. This one is going to be a little contested. This one's going to be contested as well. But we're reintroducing Russian. Happy September, everybody. Happy September. We've got a lot left in this episode. <coughs> Excuse me. Remote Russian culture. That's not bad. Economic miracle. The Federation's combined efforts in helping the Rus Russian reconstruction zone, both the rebuilding and industrializing, as well as the foreign investors from the primarily the U.S. of A. Anemic economic miracles occurred in Muscovy, as the economy has begun to boom, reaching record highs not seen in decades. Already millions of people have been lifted out of poverty as their new job opportunities appear with each passing day, with the region finally overcoming its economic stagnation that came with its resubjugation. Muscovy is re quickly re approaching reintegration into a glorious motherland. I like this election stuff. I like it. Oh, we have another guy here, huh? Hmm... No, we're good, guys. We are good. Deficit's not good. So that's going up 90%. Um, I'd like to tempt tax hike so we can actually make you know a surplus, but whatever. I know it's not super beneficial for us, but whatever. That's the way I like to play my TNO. First day of work. It was a cold morning of Vorodnes, yes. It was a morning like none other in the life of ever. Arina Voronkova. At the end of her service as a sniper during the Second West Russian War, the state summoned her to full, fulfill her duty once again, but this time she'd be behind a Mosin scope at a teacher's desk. Not behind the Moses scope. Alina can only think of her childhood and Tom's because she prepared to leave her apartment. She remembered countless days running through the snowdrifts around her side of her home, sprinting down the path to school with a song in her heart. She fell in love with the idea of teaching before she could spell, but then came the wars, the anarchy, the misery, and truth. She ended up on the wrong side of the Siloviki sites when they fought the Republic. It was only the desperation of the period before the Reclamation War began that let her herself, let her pick herself on the, off the streets. Alina shriveled as she marched out of her modest apartment. A worried sigh escaped her lips. Was it even possible? A second chance? It almost seemed impossible. A stocky man stood on a ladder next to the elementary school's door, paintbrush in hand, rewriting the, colonel, the school's name in Kirk. Uh, Arlena couldn't help but admire the dandelion yellow building in the imperial style. It was a meager facsimile in the gymnasiums of old, but function came before splendor, especially in the times like these. Colonel Voronkova, the painter, practically jumped off his ladder as he rushed to greet her. What a blessing. I've been demanding that the government send us a real teacher. For months, the children, bless them, hardly know how to ask for a biscuit in Russian. I've tried, by God, I've tried, but... Sir so Arlena cut him off, straightening her back into a parade rest. There's no time for a hysteric. Show me inside. The principal showed Arena to the classroom. The student ran to their seats. Many of them snorted a crayon mush over their face and greeted her with a hesitant Guten Morgen, Frau Leherin. <coughs> oh, God. Uh, Anya smiled. Good morning, little ones. My name is Colonel uh, uh, Miss Voronkova. Well, I think we're going to learn a lot from each other. Is, is, this, is this an actual picture? Like, that's interesting. That's cool. Blondes. I love them. Anyways, uh, let's not talk about that right now. I think we're probably going to win. I have a feeling we're going to win. Occupy the, well, not quite occupied by the German Reich. This could be a slightly bug, maybe. I don't know. Technically, this is occupied by us, but whatever. Mm, where do we want to just absolutely win? Um, I'm thinking here. Yeah. How about another rally? Promote Russian culture. If the people of the most people... If we want the people of Muscovy to fully embrace the Russian heritage, we must promote all aspects of Russian tradition and culture both new and old throughout Muscovy. Whether that be seen on TV, heard on the radio, or surrounding them on the streets they walk on, the Muscovites will remember the roots. Given time, Muscovy will be plus with a cultural birth just as though Russian as any other Russian citizen living within the Federation. Nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we got a lot to read. Election day. Crowds around Russia gather on the TVs and radios where they could be found. Some stare at the screen intently in the comfort of their own homes. Others crowd around an old dusty radio set in the public parlors of bars. Nevertheless, their attention is all glued to the single broadcast. News stations around Russia go lie. The word on the lips. Citizens of the Russian Federation. On this fine day, the uh, blank. We are already ready to announce the winner of this year's presidential election elections are the president of the Silesian leader of the RAPP. Forming a government. 
Currently, our government holds less than half the total seats in Duma. Was possible to run a minority government, so we're calling for us to invite the other parties such that we won't be placed into awkward situations by rivals. Should we proceed? We don't need them. Oh, God. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, maybe we should allow some monarchists to return. CPRF's participation may prevent prevent further radicalization. SR is going to be under control of the have stakes in the system. Well, who's the second largest party? The paternalists. Oh, God. Oh, we can also increase this. Yeah, there we go. So now, we're by ourselves. Unity says 60%. We have 180. Four. Well, the second... There are opposition, so no. DSPR... The Socialist Party is pretty good to get. RSLP as well. So I guess DSPR, maybe? I guess we'll keep going. The farmers will speak. Um, well, I don't know. Trade policies. SR is going to control the excess. I don't want to lower conservatism, though. Uh, we can form a coalition with the communists. Yeah. This one? Oh my god. Probably not. We should ask monarchists to return. There's liberalists, liberals, liberalists. Farmers will speak before the Duma. Uh, uh, pensions. SR is going to be the sixth in the system. I don't want to do that one though, because there's, there's not that much support. There's only three percent support for them. Monarchists. Uh, uh, let's go with the farmers. We'll go with farmers. Why not? Well, crap. Can we vote for it? Can we get anyone else in here? Coalition Unity, 75%, that's not bad. Um, that only gives us 93 senators and 189 deputies. Oh, I just compromised on something. Bribe? Set down with party leaders? Gain 7.5 opinion. Accuse of populism. Well, hopefully we don't have to make any more bills. But we'll see. Miracle on the Volga. In a country often viewed as incredibly impoverished, Russia started to experience a genuine change in fate. In the, what many economists have begun to call the miracle on the Volga, the Russian economy has begun to flourish due to many factors. For one, Russian businesses have regained access to the core Russian heartland, meaning many more customers and opportunities for expansion and development. Following the war, the Russian Federation turned the billions stored for armed forces into economic growth to develop and encourage new and old industries coupled with massive amounts of infrastructure development. A particular example that demonstrates Russia's resolve into developing to a true superpower is its investments in advanced technologies. The example is a new millennia program, which aims to turn the Russian Federation into a juggernaut of electronic development. Currently, the program is intended to develop standardized systems and teach up to a million by 1980 and various aspects of computer science development. The new millennia is but one program. Other programs have targeted automobiles, heavy machinery, and consumer goods. These programs have been coupled with an aggressive infrastructure development plan, making the travel of goods easier than any other point in Eurasian history. In addition to new industries, the Russian Federation has taken an active approach to focus on developing parts of the economy that the global economy lacks, rather than broadly developing industries across all sectors. What made the sharp focus possible was the coordination between the Russian government under President Shukshin, the major companies of Russia, and the rapidly growing middle class. The reason cited by the economic ministry is that Russia rests now in a crucial place where it has sufficient resources to develop important sectors of the economy and maintains decent relations with the sphere and warm relations with the OFM. Additionally, with Germany's defeat, the rest of Europe is eager to start trading with the Russian giant and escape the German influence. The result of this position is a massive power able to take part in the most, major market world, major, most of the major world markets, taking the best from each and using that knowledge and access to build a life beyond what was most Russians believed was possible just a decade ago. Whatever our future is, it'll be a bright one. Oh. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, I keep saying this is going to be the last episode. It looks like it's probably not. Oh, our next challenge. All right, so the West. With our place in the world decided, now comes the time for the Russian Federation to step forth once more onto the global stage. It's essential that the Federation establish its own cultural, uh, economic, and military sphere of influence and secure the borders of our motherland. Russia may never be left vulnerable to, uh, to invasion by hostile foreign powers who seek to subjugate her, the Russian people again. Never again. Oh my god. The dads have really outdone themselves. We don't need them. Uh, we just did this one. We did the farmers. We need to find other solutions. We're still... Okay, so we're still... As a minority government, we're still there, so... Um... Our patriotic party. Mm -hmm. What is it? We need to find other solutions. They have a few, but that's not that many. Got the farmers on our side, but then there's not that many of them, too. A rim, imperial restoration movement. Let's go with that one. No, okay, maybe not. I mean, this is just 
do we want the? They're our opposition. Uh. Uh, social liberals. Uh. I don't want these. Guys. I guess forming a government. Okay, it's so, okay. Uh, uh, here we go again. We'll just keep losing political power. Whatever. Um, getting a Slovakia on board could be critical. I wish I had the party's name because I I'm, I kind of know which one it is, but still. A doctrine of peace. Oh, this would be good for the economy though. Maximum investment army funding. Maximum investment. Even though we're not even using this anyways, but still. Trade laws, income taxation. I kind of like this one. Picking the workers always works. Slovakia could be critical. Oh, I got the DSPR then. Well, all right. Here. Um, our coalition will like this move. We're at 61%, so sit down with party leaders. <laughs> why not? Screw it, why not? <clears throat> we didn't need political power, right? Right? Absolutely. Begin local elections. With the Russian language on the rise of Muscovy and the smooth transition from an agricultural economy to an industrial economy, the people begin calling for elections to begin. For decades, the Muscovites have been deprived of choice in their own land. They can't elect anyone to represent them in any form of government, made them do made them be second class citizens. Their enthusiasm for democracy is promising and shows the Federation that Western Russia is becoming more and more ready to rejoin the motherland and embrace its value liberty and democracy. One more years. Focus down in Europe. Phoenix rises. Where uh we want this one. White Knight, Scarlet Sails, but uh, down in Europe. The Phoenix Rises, established collaboration as government. Oh, deport German settlers. The White Knights began in the Petrograd summer. Students plunge into endless festivities, overwhelm the, uh, uh, the city with candlelight and booze. Poetry contests, architectural exhibits, and traditional cuisine fill, fill their bellies and their minds. One by one, inch by inch, the people buried the defaced memory of St. Petersburg. Timofel Antonov and Victoria Rausenbach walk past the embankment, admiring the sun hanging in the evening air, absorbing the balalaika melodies and traditional dances like sponges. Faint yellow light illuminated the Victoria's soft features. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. More political power, too. Don't you love this, Timofel said. The music delights the revival of our culture. Our culture, Timofel. Or Timofei. Russian culture, I mean. Only a few years ago, all this would have been illegal. God knows how many people would have disappeared. Victoria hugged her jacket to her chest and looked out over the sea. What even is Russian culture? It's beautiful, but how do I fit into it? Where does the daughter of a German mother and Estonian father belong? Timofey put his hand on his partner's shoulder. Russia's culture is us. We are her wonders, her history, her tradition. She is Cossack, Tartar, Russian, Circassian, Belarusian, Buryat, Kalmyk, even Germanic. She is the mud in her shoes and the rubble we leave behind. She is ice, forests, and slush, churches, and palaces, icy seas, and snowy plains, mosquito choked tundra, and sand blown deserts. She's bravery, knowledge, strength, and compassion. She flows as calm as a dawn, but harsh as a Siberian winter. She goes with us, and yet she's the land we make home within. Timofey took her hand in his own and pulled her close. Across the bay, a uh, standard frigate flying scarlet sails past calm throughout the Neva. Russia is whatever people believe it is. A Russia without you, without people like you, means nothing to me. Those cultures and empires collapse to make place for new formations. All right. Um, forgive me. Oh, the Armenians will receive Russian military advisors. Oh, that's cool. Armenian revolution. We do Armenian revolution. Rise to the east and onto the clique. My brother's in Mongolia. We can use political power. Towards the east, the Japanese Empire rules over the lands of China with an iron fist, but lately, uh, its grip is slipping as rumors of a great Chinese rebellion in the names of freedom from Japanese oppression can be heard throughout occupied China. Whether these rumors are true or not, it's undeniable that the Japanese Empire has fallen from grace in recent years. With this in mind, the Federation should move to exploit Japan's weakness and establish Photo in East Asia in preparation for the great war to come. Our eyes on the world. Here you go, Stepan. Make sure to get this done by tomorrow. Stepan looked up from his desk. The smell of coffee was still fresh in his mind. One of his colleagues placed a stack of files behind his computers. He gave a polite nod to Stepan. Don't worry, you're going to like this one. Spawn smiles as he reached for his coffee mug and grabbed the first uh, file. He almost dropped his mug in surprise. Polish Home Army, resistance contracts, weapon shipments? Spawn couldn't believe what it read. It seemed like Russia had bigger plans. Freeing Poland would seem like an impossible endeavor. But anything that drives Germany more up at the wall would ultimately be a victory for the free world. He grabbed another file from the stack and opened it. The Maklik! He thought they were under Japanese control, but it appears that that's not the case. Another Chinese Republic? That's bound for trouble, but both China and Russia could get far together with the right people like Stepan. He kept reading more files. Mongolian uprisings and nomad cooperation in Ulaanbaatar. They gladly accept Russian help. Stepan did wonder how the co-prosperity sphere would react to this, but considering that the Federation showed its might against Germany, they would probably be back down. Armenia? It's a name you ain't heard for a while, a nation that suffered even more than Russia did. There's still some rebel groups whose fires are still burning, Russia would provide the wood they needed. Surely Turkey wouldn't mind. Stepan looked at the stack of smile, remember when one man repaired the Russian nation, and once again, Russia will repair other countries. He grabbed another one, looked down into his mug empty. It's going to be a long one. Oh, we have no coffee here, though. 
Oh, we got that one done. Awesome. Speaking of local elections, new beginnings. We're going to read next. Oh, we just annexed the West Russian Good Construction Authority. But we don't even court, do we? Hopefully we do. I hope we do. Oh, my God. Uh, 80, almost 87 point... Almost 87 billion. New beginnings. Dimitri is slumped in his living room chair, honestly, like seven of uh, finally being free of the Germans have faded him, and uh, uh, doubly honestly, he was oppressed. Oh my gosh, he felt useless. During the war, he'd run communication between partisan groups and the approaching Federation army afterwards. He <clears throat> helped with the reconstruction as a translator, but that quickly dried up. Now he sat mostly at home, watching hockey and drinking. He'd grown a gut, and a pile of cigarettes grew at his left hand. Now on the third goal, and I thought he was paying attention, a thunderous knock shock from the, shook from the front door. Dimitri, Sergei, Ivanovich's voice called, I've got an offer for both of us. Dimitri rolled his eyes and opened the door. Come in, Sergei, but don't take your shoes off, please. Don't worry, it'll only be a minute, Sergei. Stepped into the entryway, he just had in hand. I uh, talked with a local official from one of the big parties. They aren't as popular as the RAPP or Shukshin's boys, but they got real potential. You know, Polish, right? Better than my Uzbek shirt, what about it? We're looking for a translator to help with them print leaflets in minority languages. You know, there's plenty of dysphoria left in Orosk, not to mention some modern Volgograd. Dimitri grunted, thinking for a minute. I haven't been to Volgograd in years. What party is this? It's a really interesting group. Left enough to get some Soviet holdovers, but not left enough to get discourage those who look down on the old Union. What we'll campaign on promoting a political and workplace democracy, expanding welfare, empowering unions, and drastic expansion of the sovereign wealth fund to nationalize the mega corporations? Or we'll democratize the nation? Uh, democratize the nation from the ground up? Sergey, what's the effing name? The Democratic Socialist Party of Russia. Dimitri took off, took a puff of a cigarette, and threw it out the door. It burned on the bare concrete walkway, and you get out of this stupid house. Find him in. Where do we start? All right, now, my old friend. The legacy of the United Russia. From the Baltic to the Okhotsk Sea, our glorious motherland was once united and strong under the mighty flag of Russia. Uh, ready to face anything the world had to throw at it. Muscovy was a story that Russia truly began, where the Eastern Slavs rose from the petty kingdoms in a global superpower. I stand the Muscovy people back into the loving arms of Russia and truly unite the Russian people under the proud flag of Russian Federation. Together, forever, united and free. Our eyes to the West, although beaten, the Einheit Spack still maintains a tight grip over the many peoples of Russia. Or <coughs> in Europe, I mean. Where they're wrecking chaos, of course. And as a result of their defeat in the Second West Russian War, there exist opportunities for the Federation to expand its influence into the West and bring liberty uh, and, uh, to the oppressed of Europe. We shall free the people of German rule one nation at a time. So, almost 87 billion. Does it actually go up to 87 billion? Oh, it does. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, you're hurting me so much. So yeah, I guess there's going to be an, at least one more episode, because there's so much to read here. And I do apologize that we can't like do all these, but I'll go back, like I said earlier, and do them. Use cons commands of action we can get rebuilt in the Baltic states. And maybe that might change things up, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I hope it works out that way, and the game is lagging super hard. Was it? Is going to... Oh! Never mind. The motherland. We got him back. We're looking beautiful here. Oh my god, we have to core these stuff. Why? Why don't we just, like... <sighs> at least help reduce the cost of coring stuff? I think that made more sense. But... In the late night, workers at a lumber mill near Smolensk shared stories, drank, and celebrated their newfound freedom. Constructed during the German occupation, the lumber mill was typically a quiet, cold place until the first Russian troops swept through the building during the war. One of the first things that changed was the flag and now bright, cheery colors of the Federation adorned the pole that sat outside. Now the workers weren't afraid to not only look at the flag they lived under, but also the stars that hung above them. Under the summer sun of Belo Be Belogrod, a group of young students took their stipend out of a freshly built commercial district. They wanted to flare up their clothing and maybe even buy some makeup. Only after all the laughter and celebrating did they realize that they spent too much and several the next day had to make a phone call home. Despite having to get call home, none had, none had to have to worry if they could see their families again. With the Moscow's first reconstructed synagogue, I said no one would have believed only a year ago would ever happen again. A public bar mitzvah was held. Jews, not only did the fear of the entire culture being eradicated leave their mind for that moment, but they could be happy about the future for the first time. Among the Tsar, tears and laughter that followed. They danced and leapt in the night, danced deep into the night, knowing this was but their first of many nights. Throughout the mass of motherland, the people celebrated dance and sang songs throughout that I thought many were lost. And a place typically thought of as a cold and unforgiving place, the people of the Federation found them warmth in the passion they now and freedom. The torture of liberty has thawed throughout the motherland. Oh, that's the Maklik. Our brothers in Mongolia. Nice the Western members of Poland. Our members are Armenia. I definitely want to do this one, but I kind of want to keep going this way. I guess we'll do the Phoenix Rises. <coughs> like a burning phoenix. Great Russia has risen from the ashes of the Great Patriotic War and has become a force to be reckoned with once more. With the lessons of the Tsars and the former Union and the age of warlordism with us, the government will return to the glorious city of Moscow and lead our motherland to a new glorious age of prosperity, freedom, and hope. Oh, do you us? Oh, what? Oh my god, are you kidding me? The general government for decades has been the instrument of the right, carrying out mass killings of Poles, destroying what Polish heritage remains, and facilitating the mass oppression of their people. However, the right weakened, the general government has been left vulnerable to foreign forces. With the right men dead, their entire administration will be thrown into disarray, which will pave the way for the Polish army to liberate their homeland, and we just have the man for the job. Memories of Poland. 
Despite their long history of rivalry, the Polish people have always been seen as brothers of the Russian people, especially in recent years. Much like us, Poland had been, been betrayed by the Germans. They were stabbed in the back. There were, there were people murdered in the thousands of their lands colonized. Like us, the Polish nation resisted the Germans, but unlike Russia, Poland was swiftly beaten by the Reich once more. Every day. The memory of Poland fades away into obscurity, the strength of the Poles waning as the Germans continue to colonize what remains of the Polish homeland. However, with the defeat of the Reich, a new opportunity has presented itself. With the proper Russian assistance, we can rebuild the whole army of Poland and help the nation break free from the rule of the German while the master of Europe continues to be plagued with domestic issues. Soon, our Slavic brother will be with Russia once more, finally free from the Nazi menace that have ruled its lands for far too long. Uh, we can't even... Man. Uh, I don't know. Is this supposed to be like this? Is, are we supposed to... Uh, all we can do is... I want to arm the Poles. I really want to arm the Poles. I like Poles. Well, stripper Poles? Um, for decades, the Germans have not only murdered and oppressed their people, but have already attempted to colonize their lands. While General Plan Oswald was not completely successful in the east, there are several regions in the uh, Eastern Europe that are now the German majority. We haven't forgotten where the settlers came from, how they arrived in the east, who had previously lived in the lands they occupy, it's time to determine the fate of the German settlers on, in Eastern Europe. Let's come back home, man. Economy-wise, that's not bad. Oh, well, growth is looking really bad because we're trying to do more stuff here, but whatever. Um, Phoenix rises. Moscow are home. <coughs> Moscow are home. Shukshin had never seen Moscow in person before the Germans trampled it all over it. Ever since the victory against the fascist threat, they traveled to the city monthly, sometimes even every other week on the first trip there. The city was mostly, for the most part, rubble, and the buildings that remained were unrecognizable mockeries. Clearly, Speer's children have been play the heart of the conquest. This is unacceptable. The capital and motherland is better than the disfigured Nazi architecture and crown the ruins. Within a day of the official liberation, the workers, engineers, and designers were run about restoring the city, clearing away the bomb shredded walls and the cracked foundations. For the better part of a year, more than 70% of Moscow underwent reconstruction, in addition to houses, apartments, roads, and hospitals, schools, and an airport. Workers installed works of art, statues, and plants, and the reconstructed historical buildings under the watchful eyes of the former uh, Decembrists. Museums, art, galleries, theaters of, of both sorts, and multitudes of stadiums popped up on every street corner. The infamous Red Kremlin was restored and expanded, with the intention that it become the base camp of the Federation's presidential and legislative bodies. Other government buildings were built in the Russian neoclassical style. Brutalism and the vile malasma that surrounded it was banished from Moscow's borders forever. Plans for Moscow's metro system. Long and banned were revived with modern technology and engineering techniques. In the end, Phoenix beat out time for the bit by a slim margin. Moscow have a metro system that will make their opposites in New York and Tokyo blush. But by the end of the decade, Moscow will be a new city, a marvel of engineering and culture, connected with a truth yet unafraid to look towards the future. Uh, no one in the world can rival Moscow's beauty. And done in Europe. Can we do that one? Future of the Ukraine. Oh my god, we have to use consequence to get that done. Okay. Bruh. Which we'll come back to this one, I guess, later on. Even though I want that. Unlocks the president. Wait, what? Unlocks the presidential focus trees. Now, this is. Okay. Well then. We're gonna have to use some serious consequence here. So. Uh, rebuild the home army. Although once disunited and broken after the nation fell once more to the Nazi armies, the Polish home armies are the only hope we have of being able to free Poland once more. They may not have the strength now to free their homeland, though Russian, through Russian material support and military advisors assisting them every step of the way, the home army will rise once more and finally be able to stave off the Nazi Hydra. One last time. Polish partisans. Oh, wow. Uh, Poland's little green men. The Krakow uprising. <coughs> it might be a little bug, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know. Six days left. A day in Petrograd. I'll we'll figure out what we're going to do with those guys. And we get 0.26, my god. Because we're integrating for eight places. A day in Petrograd. Shukshin stood at the remains of the Petrograd Harbor. He never thought what he would be able, to be able to stand on the gates of the Baltic Sea, yet here he was, a gentle flow. Uh, the Baltic water was rather calming, helping the stressed prisoner relax for a moment. Eventually, Shukshin. Looked over his shoulder and saw a crowd of German settlers staring at him, either with curiosity, hatred, or both. The only thing that stopped him was a wall of Russian soldiers, local police, and the helicopters overhead that were on constant patrol. Being on Petrograd felt strange. Vasily wasn't used to being in a land where he wasn't surrounded by his fellow Russians, Yakuts, Tartars, and the like, but Germans? The people that invaded his motherland decades ago, and the people that Russia had finally beaten under the banner of the Federation. Bokushkin was heavily against him coming to Petrograd, declaring that the city would not receive him as well as Moscow or Smolensk, but of course, Vasily ignored him. He needed to see the Baltic himself. He needed to see the aftermath of everything that had happened, the consequences of the occupation. He had to see what Germany had done to Eastern Europe himself. Vasily sighed as General Evstein, who had accompanied him upon hearing the President's arrival, walked over. President Shukshin, who advised we leave before some of the more radical elements of this crowd start getting any ideas, the General advised. Shukshin looked over and saw several settlers waving the red banner wearing uh, a swastika. 
Seeing the people bearing the symbols of hatred, it nearly broke his heart, but he had to remind himself. These people were victims of Hitler's vision as much as his people were. They had been indoctrinated by the Nazi party and bred to hate. But still, he could only hope that with time, Hitler's legacy could finally be undone. But still, he finally nodded, and the older general escorted him to the car. Time heals all sorrows. Way to St. Petersburg. The settlers of Belarus will be returned home to Germany. Gotland holds the second largest concentration of German settlers in all of Eastern Europe, settling around the Dnieper River. The Germans are sitting on one of the most important river basins in all of Eastern Europe that flows to several nations, including Russia proper. With such a strategically important region settled by the Germans, should we establish a friendly government in the region, or should we allow the Ukrainians to claim their ancestral home? We annex them. We just straight up annex them. Gotland will be Ukrainian again? Uh, collaborationist government. Uh, I guess we'll go with this one, probably, I guess. Oh, so they get that. We we get this anyways. Okay. It's not bad. Or I guess not. Deport the Germans of Gotland. Do we, should we do that? Uh, maybe not. Do we deport it? I mean, it seems like we have to. Adolf Hitler land. Adolf Hitler? Is that really called Adolf Hitler land? <laughs> That's funny. Good job, guys. Yeah, holy crap. Adolf Hitler land. What the heck? Fate of St. Petersburg. Petrograd was once the capital of the Russian Empire and bears the name of Russia's greatest Tsar. Under the Soviet Union is known as the homeland of the revolution, where the October Revolution took place, he says, however. It's a city primarily populated by the German settlers, who moved there and after the city had been destroyed after the siege of Leningrad and revolt by slave hands. What should we do with the city? Should we continue to allow the German settlers to live in Petrograd, or should we make attempts to diversify this great one city? People's support will slightly decrease. German Autonomous Zone. I guess it makes more sense for them to be Russian again. We're going to go with the collaborations government for all these, I guess. I don't know. Holy crap. And there's another. Uh, Future Crimea. Fate of Vyborg. Oh! The city of Vyborg was won by the Soviet Union back in 40 when the Red Troops armed with Trump for the Finnish troops, although the city was eventually taken by Finland during the Great Patriotic War. Many of our Jones believe that with St. Petersburg back in the hands of the Russian Federation, which put some distance between Finland and St. Petersburg and undertake what it's rather ours. Go to Border War? Well, we don't have any soldiers right now, so. Uh, we might come back for it later. We'll see. Uh, feature Crimea. Crimea is often referred to as the Gate of the Black Sea, a peninsula fought over for centuries, from Romans to Ottomans and Russians. This position makes it strategically inviolable as controlling Crimea ensures the complete domination of the Black Sea itself. So begs the question, what would it be the fate of the Crimean Peninsula going forward? Give it a uh, Gotenland. That's Russian. It's Ukrainian. Give Crimea to Gotenland. Nothing's really changed. It's still us, but we have uh, German autonomous zones. Uh, we'll see if it's truly the lesser evil or not, but deport the Germans. Oh, we could deport them too, but we'll see. Um, yeah, this is not 100% there, but you know, whatever. Um, I think we're going to end it there. I know uh, you guys probably don't want to see me do certain stuff like this, but it is what it is. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow, um, as we'll see what else we can do with the Russian Federation and enlarge the CSTO. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.